the ultimate cruising movie. American Graffiti! Where were you in 62? If Where You Were was cruising the boulevard in Modesto, California, then this 1973 movie suggests what it might have been like, at least according to how George Lucas recalls it, although most of the movie was actually filmed in Petaluma and other surrounding areas. The film is a who's who of young stars of the period, Ron Howard and Cindy Williams, before Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley, but after Andy Griffith, obviously. All clear, do you? Yeah. The bigger you get, the tired you get. Richard Dreyfus before Jaws. It's got that beat. Suzanne Summers before Three's Company, and Mackenzie Phillips before One Day at a Time. Wow! How'd you get your mom to say yes? It has Wolfman Jack as himself. No, man, I'm not the Wolfman. And the breakout role for a carpenter that would later become Han Solo in Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford. And the list goes on. The film is essentially about a group of people coming to terms with the end of high school and having to decide what to do going forward with their lives, all while hanging out at a drive-in and cruising around town. And the entire movie takes place over one night. But this is all practically secondary to the cars, and there are a lot of them. Perhaps the car that gets the most attention is Ron Howard's, or Steve Bolander's, 1958 Impala. It sports chrome reverse wheels and aftermarket dual exhaust, a car that would have most likely have had either a 283 or a 348, but according to the movie, it has a tricarb 327, something that would have had to have been a recent swap in 1962. It spends most of its time being driven around by Terry the Toad. Is that you in that beautiful car? During which time he fails at street racing, twice, although he does manage to pick up a girl in it, which leads to parking and drinking and the car getting stolen. It is eventually recovered, however. The car to beat, however, is John Milner's 32 Ford Deuce Coupe, the car considered to be the fastest in the valley, a classic hot rod that may or may not have been exactly period correct. The chop top coupe with the small block Chevy V8 certainly looked the part, but the modified 327 may have had some newer parts on it. Its THX 138 license plate is a tribute to Lucas's sci fi thriller THX 1138 of 1971. Of course, we've all seen THX since then. The challenger for fastest car would be Bob Falpa's, or Harrison Ford's, 1955 big block Chevy 150. One of the same cars used in the movie Two Lane Blacktop, with a clone of it being made up for the rollover scene. In reality, it's a 10-second dual-quad tunnel ram 454 four-speed car. But the 454 didn't come out until 1970, so for the sake of the movie, we are supposed to pretend that it was a 409. Next would be the 51 Mercury lead sled belonging to the Pharaoh's gang a customization that was slapped together in just a couple of weeks specifically for the film. So under the typical custom Merc bodywork, a chop and channel, it was basically stock. Cindy Williams' character, Lori Henderson, drove a stock 58 Edsel Corsair sedan, making one wonder what it was supposed to say about her character. Perhaps it's her parents' car. Suzanne Summers was the mysterious blonde in the 56 Thunderbird that Kurt Henderson... Richard Dreyfus becomes obsessed with. I just saw a vision. I saw a goddess. His own car, being a Citroen 2CV, a period correct car, although the one used in the film was a 1967 model. And it is still quite possibly a step up from Terry the Toad's Vespa, which actor Charles Martin Smith really loses control of at the drive-in, and it was kept in the film. And there were a plethora of other cars, background and otherwise. That included a white Falcon station wagon, a number of DeSotos, while others ranged from customs to hot rods to run-of-the-mill late 50s and 60s sedans, and the 1961 Ford Galaxy police car that they used for an iconic stunt. They tie a cable from a post to the rear axle, and when it takes off, it yanks the axle right out from underneath the car. 
something Mythbusters tried to duplicate on a 90s Crown Victoria cop car, but was unable to do so with the cable snapping instead. As would be expected, after much posturing and smack talk, hey, you're supposed to be fast thing in the valley, man, but that can't be your car. It must be your mama's car. Hey, I like the color of your car there, man. What's that supposed to be? Sort of a cross between piss yellow and puke green, eh? The two main hot rods have to face off in a race at the end. <laughs> But the Chevy gets all squirrely, loses control, and rolls off the side of the road. Overall, it's a must-see movie, even if you're not a car guy. The music, the history, the story, the acting, all on point. The directing was somewhat revolutionary, as it was shot mostly at night, in the dark. And much of the movie seems like back-to-back -back music videos. And then there was more American Graffiti, in 1979. A sequel that follows up on the main characters, looking at how they've fared, checking in on them every New Year's each year from 1964 to 1967. Not as much of a car guy movie. Milner has gone from street racing to racing early dragsters at the track, and there are many interesting period cars. But the movie is more focused on the characters, and quite frankly, I found it disappointing, and not just for that reason but because of how we follow up with the characters. Although it is hard to resist checking out after seeing the first one. So at this point, I thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to leave your comments below and like and subscribe.